Okay, good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are viewing this from, and welcome to the FACE session of Adacore's 2021 Tech Days. Now, from the title of this session, you might have three questions. What is FACE? What is FACE conformance? And what do Ada and Adacore have to do with these topics? In a previous Tech Days presentation back in 2018, we introduced what the future airborne capability environment effort was all about and how Adacore contributes. You can find the recording on YouTube if you search for Adacore Tech Days FACE. So today I'll just give a summary. The main part of the session will be on FACE conformance and in particular a process that Adacore is working on for verifying FACE conformance for Ada code. This is an enhancement to the existing FACE conformance procedures and it's under consideration within the FACE organization. Not yet a done deal, but we think it effectively solves a current gap in the FACE conformance process. Albert Lee will be showing you a demo of our proposed approach after the presentation. As with our other Tech Days talks, we'll have a live Q&A session afterwards, but you can post questions at any time during this presentation. The panelists to answer your questions will be myself, Ben Broskell, my co-presenter, Albert Lee, and longtime FACE contributor, Dudry Smith. So first, a brief overview of the FACE effort. It originated back in 2010 to address an issue that seems to plague the software industry in general and defense airborne systems in particular. What can we do to reduce the high life cycle costs for software from initial development through maintenance? A consortium was chartered to come up with a solution with representatives from the government, private industry, and academia. That was the start of the FACE Consortium under the auspices of the Open Group. Adacor joined the FACE Consortium in 2012 and we're currently a principal member. The general FACE strategy consists of both a business approach to get industry suppliers on board and a technical approach that focuses on component portability and reuse. More specifically, the technical approach is based on a reference architecture that embodies the classical software engineering principle of separation of concerns. It's a layered structure with a clear distinction between portable vendor neutral interfaces and platform specific implementations. The architecture is based on open and commonly used standards, in particular the POSIX and ARINC 653 APIs, as well as IDL, coupled with data modeling requirements that guarantee a consistent worldview, for example, the same coordinate system and units of measurement by all the components. Here's a simplified picture to set the stage. You can find a more comprehensive diagram in the FACE technical standard. In this layered architecture, the application code, the components with the business logic, sit at the top. FACE refers to the layers as segments so this top layer is called, not surprisingly, the Portable Component Segment, or PCS. Now, a PCS component will need some runtime services, such as threading support or memory management. It's not allowed to directly invoke functions from the target RTOS, since that would defeat portability. Instead, it needs to either invoke functions from a standard API, in particular POSIX or ARINC 653, or else use the relevant features from specified standard programming languages. Moreover, different PCS components might be at different assurance levels depending on safety or security requirements. So the FACE technical standard defines POSIX and ARINC 653 API subsets, known as profiles, corresponding to different levels of assurance. The most restricted is the security profile, and then at increasing generality come the safety base, safety extended, and general purpose. The technical standard also defines analogous restricted subsets of language features known as capability sets for C, C++, ADA95, ADA2012, and Java. Since languages like C++, ADA, and Java realize runtime functionality through standard language syntax rather than API calls. A PCS component may need to communicate with other PCS components. This needs to be done through an API defined in the transport services segment, which supports various styles of synchronous and asynchronous communication. This API is defined in IDL, so it can be mapped to bindings in the programming languages used by the PCS components. 
Okay, if you develop airborne software, all of this sounds interesting. So what do you need to do to show that your software meets the face requirements? The first precaution is never to use the term compliance, since complying may sound like there's some wiggle room or subjectivity. Instead, your software needs to conform to the requirements, and there's an official term for such software, a UOC, or Unit of Conformance. More specifically, the FACE technical standard defines requirements that vary based on the segment in which the component resides and the profile and capability set that are targeted. A formal process known as verification then establishes whether your component meets the requirements defined for that segment, profile, and capability set. The focus of this talk is on software in the PCS. Here, you'll need to show that your component does not use a POSIX or A-Rink 653 API prohibited by the targeted profile and does not use any language feature outside the targeted capability set. You also need to provide a conformant data model, but that's outside the scope of this presentation. The verification procedures will test these properties, but as will be explained later, these procedures are currently oriented towards C and have some issues if your component is written in ADA. It's important to realize that the FACE approach focuses on cost reduction through portability, and in particular through the use of standard APIs and language features. It does not attempt to address or assess functionality or assurance properties, so it's unlike a standard such as DO178C. Furthermore, it does not address language-specific portability barriers such as implementation-dependent behavior. All of these are important quality attributes, and indeed, AdaCore's products can offer effective solutions. More on that in a few moments. So here's the basic challenge. Your software needs to meet some assurance requirements, maybe certification under MIL standard 516C or DO178C, and you want to develop face conformance software. You'll need development and verification tools that are up to the task. Let's see how to do it. Here's a variation on the V software lifecycle for phase UOCs, somewhat simplified. First, you need to design the software, that is, take the requirements and derive the software architecture and control algorithms. One of the trends we've seen in recent years in the avionics industry is the use of graphical modeling languages like Simulink and Stateflow to specify these algorithms. And Adacore has a model-based engineering tool known as QGen that fits in here. QGen comes with a code generator that takes a safe subset of Simulink and Stateflow models and generates face conformant code in either MISRA C or the Spark subset of ADA. The QGen code generator is on track to be qualified at tool qualification level TQL1, the highest TQL, which will significantly reduce your cost of certifying the software under a standard such as DO178C. Software development and verification tool sets for critical systems have been AdaCore's stock and trade for more than 25 years. And for FACE UOC developers, the GNAT Pro ADA environment is the centerpiece. We have runtime libraries that meet the requirements of the safety capability sets, in particular the light runtime and light tasking runtime. These used to be known as the CERT and RavenScar CERT libraries. And these are certifiable at DO178C level A. Both the GNAT Pro compiler through the restrictions and profile pragmas and the GNAT check coding standard verifier can help you show that your UOC meets the profile and capability set restrictions that the UOC is targeting. Other supplement, supplemental tools can also help. The code peer static analysis tool for ADA can catch vulnerabilities and solid coding errors such as race conditions, either in existing code bases or in new code as it is being written. And for the most critical software, the Spark Pro tool suite uses mathematics-based verification on a formally analyzable ADA subset to prove program properties such as correct information flows and absence of runtime errors. The GNAT Dynamic Analysis Suite includes the GNAT Test Tool for automating the generation of test harnesses and the GNAT Coverage Analyzer that can handle all levels of granularity up to modified condition decision coverage. And we're also working on a fuzzing tool. Now that you've written a UOC and verified that it meets its requirements, you're ready to take it through face verification. This will check that your code doesn't use any prohibited APIs or language features and will consist of both link time tests and source code analysis. The source analysis can be through manual inspection 
or an automated tool or both. FACE is not some futuristic standard. We're seeing major procurements, such as the Army's future vertical lift program, that are requiring conformance with the FACE safety profiles and capability sets. ADA is the language of choice on some of these programs. In some cases, because it allows an existing code base to be reused or adapted, and in other cases, simply because it encourages good software engineering practice and comes with high quality compilers and tools. However, the current phase conformance verification procedures are incomplete when it comes to ADA. So what's the problem? The basic issue is that the conformance test suite is strongly oriented around C and to some extent C++, but it doesn't address the fact that an ADA UOC obtains runtime services not through a standard API, but rather through standard language syntax that is compiled into calls on functions in a compiler vendor specific runtime library. So the conformance verification approach that works with C, linking the UOC object module against a so-called gold standard library that contains functions from the targeted profile, doesn't work with ADA. There would be unresolved calls on functions from the compiler vendor's runtime library. For a UOC written in C, unresolved link symbols would mean that conformance verification has failed. But for a UOC written in ADA, calls on functions in the compiler vendor's runtime library should be allowed, assuming that the library itself is face conformant. That is, that it implements at least the functionality required by the targeted profile and capability set. The face conformance procedures do offer the option of including the compiler vendor's runtime library as part of the UOC, but this adds considerable complexity and expense to the process and is not really a practical alternative. As a side note, most large real-time software systems are mixed language. ADA applications generally include some C code. However, the current phase conformance verification procedures for a UOC only allow the selection of a single programming language. Improving the conformance procedures to properly accommodate ADA and mixed language UOCs is a win-win situation. For a shop using ADA for airborne software, it offers an incentive to adopt the FACE approach. And for the FACE community, it opens up a large market of potential FACE adopters. So let's look at how to adapt the FACE conformance procedures to support ADA. For this part of the presentation, I'll turn the virtual mic over to Albert Lee. He'll describe the details of our proposed approach, followed by a demo. Thank you, Ben. OK, so uh, to start, um, I'd like to quickly uh, take a look and see how the CTS, the Face Conformance Test Suite, currently works. So on the top here, we have some C source code that calls pthread create. Now, uh, you uh, would normally compile this to object code. And uh, in the .o file, you get a reference to pthread create. And normally, you would link this with operating system libraries. What the CTS does is rather than linking with OS libraries, it instead has a collection of gold standard libraries, or GSLs. And these gold standard libraries contain all the things that are portable according to a certain face capability set. And they don't contain uh, anything that is not within that given uh, face capability set. So uh, given that this code at the top successfully links with the GSL, uh, it is verified as being face conformant. Now on the bottom, we have a call to put S. Now put S is not face conformant. And if we try to link that with the GSL, the link fails. And this link failure with the GSL means uh, the code is not conformant with the face profile. Now, the current version of the CTS tries to test ADA in a similar way. Um, API testing by itself is not sufficient uh, for ADA because ADA is just a more featureful language. On top of that, the existing API test in the CTS doesn't flag non-conformant calls, which is a, a problem at the moment. So for instance, at the top, we have uh, an empty ADA task, which is totally portable and face conformant. 
And if we compile it, we get an object file that depends on tasking infrastructure and the runtime. The runtime depends on the operating system, everything links up, and it's fine. On the bottom, we have a, a piece of non-conformant uh, code. Uh, Ada.txt.io is not face conformant. Um, and if we compile this, uh, we get our uh, calls to put and put line and so forth uh, in our object code, uh, which are implemented by the runtime library. Um, and again, uh, when you strap everything together, the link works. Uh, and this, this is really not OK, because uh, the CTS is not catching any of the, these uh, non-conformant calls. So we'd like to propose three updates to the FACE CTS that, uh, uh, to address uh, this issue. First, uh, as far as foundations are concerned, uh, the current CTS is developed around uh, CentOS 7 and CentOS 8. And uh, there are some deficiencies regarding, uh, among other things, the uh, compilers that are available with these uh, systems. So for this demo, we've uh, selected Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, uh, and that gives us an option of installing a, a modern uh, GCC 10 uh, a compilation system that includes a more up-to-date Ada compiler. And next, um, as we've seen, it's not really useful for the CTS to use a full Ada runtime library. That includes everything. So we've developed a prototype Ada uh, stubbed runtime library that kind of like the gold standard libraries for C, only includes interfaces that are part of the face capability set that you're working in. Um, and so we would like for something like an Ada gold standard library to be uh, standardized. And finally, we're, uh, we'd like to propose combining the CGSL uh, with an Ada GSL for each capability set, because as Ben mentioned, most real-world Ada programs are mixed language applications. And so uh, combining these two GSLs makes it really easy and makes it possible, actually, to verify whether these mixed code bases are face conformant. Um, so uh, let's uh, get on to a demonstration of our proof of concept here. So we have constructed a little uh, Docker container as a sandbox, which uh, uh, starts uh, getting populated with a copy of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS as our operating system. We've installed uh, GCC 10.3.0, which comes with Ubuntu. Uh, we have installed the latest face CTS, which is uh, version 3.1.1. And in order to get the CTS to work on this uh, the different operating system, uh, we had to make some uh, tweaks to where the CTS expects to find uh, certain executables and paths. And, uh, and so we've uh, added some modifications uh, to this CTS. And of course, the demo itself uh, is a, a demo including the stubbed Ada runtime library that we've developed and our sample code. So what we're going to do is pretty much going to happen in three main steps. Uh, we're going to take our sample code and compile it against our Ada, uh, our custom stubbed Ada runtime library, or you know that custom uh, Ada GSL, as it were. Um, and that's going to produce some object files. Uh, we'll take the sample code uh, object files and we'll present it to the CTS uh, twice, uh, running it through the CTS sort of in two modes. First, uh, uh, sort of with an Ada personality, um, and then we're going to run the same object files along with the uh, Ada runtime all packaged up through the CTS uh, with sort of a C personality as a C project. And uh, using these two different rounds, we get to test uh, uh, different aspects of uh, face conformance. All right, so um, we are now in our Docker container with uh, everything set up. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to start using the system. We're going to try to build our application now. So uh, we'll use GPR build. Um, we need a little bit of uh, coaching here uh, for GPR build uh, for it to find the correct uh, GCC 10 uh, C and C++ uh, compilers. Uh, so we provide that coaching in the form of uh, this additional a couple of additional knowledge base files and we give it uh, dash j0 to compile with uh, multiple processes and dash capital p with our project file for our sample code so building our sample code immediately bombs with the first of a couple of booby traps um, so uh, ada.calendar uh, is the uh, issue here uh, ada.calendar is not included in the face safety extended profile which is what we're using here so um, that's where these compilation errors come from our stubbed ada runtime library does not include uh, ada.calendar so um, uh, naturally it bombs if we get rid of the references oops, to ada calendar and try rebuilding uh, we end up with additional errors. Um, uh, in this case, uh, we have this warning that system.vxworks.ext is a, an internal GNAT unit. And, uh, you know, this is non-portable and therefore definitely not uh, um, uh, 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 face conformant. The use of wide characters as well, um, uh, all over here, uh, is also not face conformant. So this is the, definitely doing its job uh, catching all of these guys. So if we get rid of these references to wide character and to that uh, internal system package and try rebuilding, uh, we end up with one more undefined uh, reference now to get car. Now this one uh, exists because we're using this uh, pragma import to uh, uh, import the uh, get car function from the C library. And uh, the ADA runtime library is not really responsible for uh, checking for face conformant usage of POSIX APIs. So for now, we'll just add uh, um, a linker argument uh, dash lrgs and add the uh, libc library just to get this to link and let's bring up the uh, cts to check for uh, everything that we need to check for so we'll cd into the face conformant test suite bring up the cts gui and now uh, we have uh, already prepared two projects uh, with tool configuration files. The first is an ADA conformance test. We'll run that. All right. And this is uh, uh, set up with 4.0 files that comprise our sample code, as well as 1.a file that contains our injectable interface implementations. And uh, here we see that the conformance test passed. I'll show you the PDF real quick. Um, boom. All right. So this uh, conformance test passed. And if we uh, drill down, you could see the data model uh, conformance test passed as well as the PCS segment uh, conformance tests. And we could see a whole lot of green here. Uh, now, uh, we do know that there is a, uh, an un a, a violation here. We, we actually know that there is a call to get car in here. Uh, and to check for violations of the C API, uh, um, we will, uh, another step is necessary, we'll uh, use this uh, C project as well. And um, here we go. As we run this conformance test, what we're provided, what we've provided to the C project, are the four A the four files that comprise our sample code, our injectable uh, interface implementations that we've packaged in the library, 
uh, two dot a files that comprise our custom stubbed uh, ADA runtime library. And uh, as you could see, the conformance test here fails. It successfully um, catches, I'll show you here in the PDF, it successfully catches uh, the use of get car. And if we drill down, we could see that all the data model conformance tests pa uh, pass. The PCS segment conformance test fails. And if we drill down here, we see here this uh, undefined reference to get car. Um, and uh, of course, uh, if we uh, um, get rid of that reference and we rebuild, uh, everything will pass and we will have uh, verified a fully conformant um, uh, UOC. And uh, so thank you for uh, your participation. And uh, let's head over to the Q&A.